In this video, what we're going to cover is how to add an interactive video background for our banner. We're going to replace the existing image that we put in a previous lab and enable this one to autoplay uh, as well as loop and be muted to just have really a passive yet interactive effect for our site. The website that you can use for this particular lab is uh, videos.pexels.com. It's got a bunch of free stock videos you can use without having to worry about any type of infringement on somebody else's uh, video rights, whichever they may have. To begin though, what we need to do is just do a little bit of cleaning here for our site. So first things first, let's go ahead and create a folder in our parent directory for our videos. The next thing we will do is find a video that we want to use for our background. So I'm just going to go find one with the computer, make something really easy, and this looks good enough. And then we're just going to go ahead and download that. So download this into your video file. Go ahead and press save. And we will refresh our local files. And I'm just going to rename this to be a little more code friendly. So to rename something once you've selected over, it's quite simple. Just press once, and then you have that option to rename. So I'm just going to call it Banner Video with a dash for a space. Make that nice and easy. And then the next thing I'm going to do is insert the tag for that. So if we look in our code, we have our section for the banner right here. And we don't actually have to place the video inside of it because we're going to be doing a rule today, positioning it fixed. So it's going to just be stuck in a particular spot um, and it's not going to be bound by any other tag. So to do this, we just need to type in video, which is the name of the video tag. And next thing we're going to link or hyperlink the video to the source of this. First thing is that we know it's in our video file and we only have one video, which is our banner video. Outside of the quotations, this is where we're going to apply some video controls. First being we want it to autoplay. And you don't have to do any equals or anything for this, they're just standalone ones. Second, we want it to loop. And the third, we don't want any sound, muted. So now with those three rules in place, the video will play on load, meaning when you get to the site. We're next also going to apply it to loop, so once it restarts, it'll play over and over again, as you can see right now, and then muted to have no sound. What we need to do next is remove some of the rules of our banner so we don't have this redundant image. To do that, all we have to do is comment out the URL background rule we've applied in there, and then we will add in the rules for our video. Now we're going to do a few that we're a uh, little unfamiliar with for this video, and the first one being position fixed, which we haven't done, second being the Z index, and then the last using the transform property, where we'll translate the X and Y of this video to be positioned quite nicely in our page. So let's go ahead and type in video, add our curly brackets, and start defining the rules for this. The first one being that we want its position, we've worked with absolute before, fixed. What's interesting about fixed is when it is, you can see everything else moves, but it does not. It can be quite useful, and uh, for the purpose of a video it's nice because we only ever want it at the top of the page. The next thing we're going to do is apply the top rule. Now. At first, this might sound a little confusing, but when we add the transform property, it'll balance this whole process out. So we want the top to be at 50%. We want the left to also be at 50%. And you'll, just to see what's happening, if you stop this halfway through, it'd be quite a peculiar spot. So that's why uh, applying multiple rules at once will really get this nice, clean effect with it. The fourth rule is probably the most important from a organization point of view, and that is the Z index. So just to explain how Z index works, if you can think, as you're familiar with X and Y axis, X is the horizontal movement, Y is the vertical, Z is the three-dimensional way of interacting with it. So if you could almost think of it that 
if one object is in front of the other, it would have a higher z index. So we're going to do a lower number because we want this to be behind. By default, all things have a z index of 0. So we want this to be 1 behind. We can do negative 1. But just to make sure that we have no objects, because some may be lower, we're just going to do a negative 100 just for good keeping. And now you can see that although it's not positioned quite right just yet, it's behind everything now. Now what we're going to do is add our transform property. And we're going to apply two rules inside of this. First being the translate x being negative 50%. And you could think of that as we're counteracting the left rule there. And then being the translate y negative 50% as well. And then let's add our semicolon. You can see we're close. We're getting there. Not quite yet because we need to still apply to our banner a height rule that will allow it as well to be equally positioned with this. So in order to do that, we just need to add the height. You would have had it 400 pixels before, so I'll just leave it back like that, to let's do 100% of the height. So VH is just a measurement for vertical height or the variable height of your monitor. And when we go ahead and preview that, and all things load up, I'm just going to go ahead and preview now. Save. You can see now we have that interactive video and our content is there. So not quite there just yet because what we need to do is apply one more design rule to enable our website to not look like the video background is entirely there all the time. So to do that we just need to add a few rules to our sections and that's where our articles are. So to continue on with this we have our articles and what we're going to do is wrap all three of these. So just by doing like this, we're going to wrap those tags in a div, and we're going to call this content dash parent. Now that we have this entire content parent, we can go ahead and add a rule for that. So content dash parent and add our tags. We're going to say width of 100%. And let's just do the background we had previously for the body. So if we look up, we had this background color. We can copy that, paste it below. And then you can see now we have that separation. We just want to have a little more division between this. So we're just going to we're just going to add a padding of 20 pixels, and we'll do padding top. And then when we preview after we save everything, you can see that we now have this interactive video, our content below, and just a, a really overall clean way. Once we update the banner text here, of displaying our website in an interactive manner. So in order for this to really kind of shine next, what we need to do is uh, add some color to here in our banner because it's still in front of this because this is still kind of quite colorful. So to do that, we're going to add another background rule and we're going to use what's called linear gradient. And for this to work nicely, we need to use the color picker. And I am going to use, just for this one, let's just do maybe a light blue. And this third part right here is the opacity of it. So I want this to be slightly transparent. I'm just going to use RGBA. It's a little easier to work with. And have around 75%. 
Now this won't work with just one color because a linear gradient requires multiple ones. So we're going to just copy this color and although we don't want any difference you need two for it to work. And then when we go back and forth out of here once we add our commas you'll see now that it's it's still there but it's not as uh, strongly visible. So you can get that kind of nice complementary look if you wanted to add some strong text in front of it, which we'll do just next. So we had our banner text here before. I'm going to do now color white in our banner. And then I will have this being a darker color. So if we just go to say, um, let's try this color, see if it works well. That'll be in the gray scale of things. It really pops now. But what we need to do for here is also have a line height of, and I'm just going to go change this slightly. Instead of 100% vertical height for the height here, I'm going to do 95% for that as well as that. And I'm going to change the font size to about 80. And then when we decide to save everything, you can see now we have a, a very strong text area that we could use. And you can see now that the scroll is slightly better. And we could play around with this to improve it. So just to see how that would work, if we did say 90% and then 90% again, and we went to preview this, you can see that it's raised up just a little bit. So I mean, there's I'm not perfect with my math on some of that, but you can see if you play around with it, you can start getting something that works. Now we have an uh, interactive video in the background, a strong text that can go here that we can work with later. You can see that the video is playing on entering. It's also looped and muted. And our content is available below.